Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you how to make this jelly bean design, which was designed by me. Um, I felt like this was a bit of like, kind of like in the category with my traffic cone, where it's like a little bit more of a random-ish design. Um, but yeah, I thought it would be fun to make some jelly beans. I literally was trying to think of Easter designs this year, and I was like, you know what? A jelly bean would be so cute, and uh, so I made some, and I'm, I, I actually, I really love them. So... Yeah, they don't take many bands. I do not have a band count as of when I'm filming this. I just always forget to calculate. So if you want to know what the band count is, you can check the description and the band count will be down there. I imagine it's not too high. Probably around 60-ish band, 60, 70. And this guy doesn't have a face, but I kind of just wanted to show you the shape without the face. So this is kind of what it looks like. You can see it has a bit of the bean shape. I thought it, of making it like more of an extreme like curve, but then my sister said that this kind of looks good. And um, if I made it like more like curvy and extreme, it probably won't look as good. This is kind of like a subtle little bean shape. And this one was just a fail that I tried to see if I could make it more curved and it didn't work out. So yeah, this is the version we'll be making today. It's pretty much this one. And yeah, I'm really happy with it. I like how it looks. And yeah, so this is actually an easy-ish design. Um, for this tutorial, though, I am going to expect you to already know how to increase and decrease just because there's a lot of that going on. And if I'm trying to explain what an increase is and what a decrease is while also trying to explain how to make the jelly bean, this tutorial is going to be a disaster. So if you're going to make this, just please already know what an increase and decrease is. Because that's just going to make things easier for me. And also, I won't have to explain what they are. Usually, in my other tutorials, I try to explain how to do them. But I think for this one, I'm just going to expect you to already know. So, just, that's a note. And I've just realized I forgot my notebook. Hold up. Okay, I got my notebook. So, we are ready. Um, I think that's all I had to say about these designs. I hope you decide to make them. So, today I'm going to be using this pale yellow color. It kind of just looks white on the camera. But it's like a pale yellow for my jelly bean. Um, I think these guys look really cute with jelly bands because it adds to the jelliness. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be using this. Um, the only other thing you're going to need is a hook. I'm going to be using my double-ended hook today. We only need one end though, so you can use any hook you want. I just really love this hook. And you're going to need a C-clip or something to mark your rows with. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So we will get started. I am just going to hurry up and grab... Well, I'm going to put some bands on my finger before we start. Um, I also just wanted to say it is very windy today where I live. So if you hear things, it's just, it's just the wind. It's very windy. Okay. So to start, we're going to start by wrapping a band three times around our hook. So that's one, two, three. And now we're going to be putting six stitches into this cat band, so we'll pull the band through the whole cat band. Both ends back on our hook, then just push the back one over the front one. And we'll do that again, so we'll go through the cat band. We'll pull the band through just the cat band. Put both ends back on your hook, push the back loop over the front loop. And then you're going to push this loop from last time over as well. And we're going to do that exact same thing we just did four more times. So we have six loops in total in the cat band. And I'm not going to explain too much. But yeah, we're just doing the same thing as we did last time. Almost there. I think I have five stitches. Yes, I do. Okay. So now we're going to count around to make sure we have six loops. So we'll start by counting this loop on our hook. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So once you've made sure you have six loops, instead of going into the cat band, we're going to go in through this first loop right here. Then we're going to pull a band through just this loop, so not this last loop. Put both ends back on our hook, push the back one over the front one, and then push the loop from last time over as well. And we'll be putting a C-clip on this one. Okay, so now is where it gets a little bit interesting. So we are going to be increasing everything 
but on the last technically two stitches we are going to decrease so we're already starting to do this weird increase decrease thing that kind of continues for this whole jelly bean so we're gonna be like increasing and decreasing in the same row and I'm just picking up bands okay so like I said we're gonna do increases everything basically every single loop except for these last two because we'll be decreasing them together so we're just going to increase everything and then we'll stop once we get to these last two loops and do a decrease and i'll stop when i get there but yeah and like i said i kind of already expect you to know what an increase is so we're just going to start increasing like that i just think it's easier for the tutorial if you already know what an increase is but basically all an increase is we do two stitches per loop I almost there. Okay. You know, I ate a bunch of snacks before coming to film this. And I'm already hungry again. Like, what the heck? It's because it's getting near lunchtime. But, yeah. I swear, every time I film a tutorial, though, randomly halfway, I'm like, man, I'm hungry. <laughs> Just always happens. But we're not even halfway yet. <laughs> okay. So like I said, once you get to these last two loops, instead of doing an increase, we are going to decrease. And I already expect you to know what a decrease is, but just a quick reminder, I guess. Grab the inside part of one loop, back part of the next loop, and make a stitch. And then you should be at the one with the C-clip on it, so you should just make a stitch on the one with the C-clip on it. And move it up. So to recap what we did, we increased everything except for like the last two loops, which we basically just decreased together because that's what a decrease is. And now if we count around, we should be at nine loops. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Like that. So like I said, this weird increasing and decreasing thing, it continues for pretty much the rest of the pattern until the very, very end. So for the next row, we are going to be increasing on the fourth and the fifth, and then we're going to decrease on the last one. So we're only going to decrease, yeah, we only decrease one again. So, like I said, we're going to increase on the fourth and the fifth. So we're going to basically do three single stitches, then we do two increases in a row, and then it's just single stitches, and then we decrease once we get to the last ones. Just like a lot going on in these rows. But like I said, so we're decreasing on the fourth and fifth. So first we gotta do three single stitches. So the one with the C-clip count the C clip on it will count as the first one. And this one's two. And three. And then once you've done three single stitches, you're gonna do two increases in a row because that's the fourth and the fifth. So we're gonna increase. Then we're going to increase again. And then we'll just do single stitches until we get to the last loops. So. And then once you get to the last loops, um, or the last two loops, because it's a decrease, we time together. So, you know, we'll do a decrease on these two. So, yeah, we do a decrease on these two. And then you should be at the C-clip, so we'll just make a stitch on the one that has a C-clip on it. And we'll move it up. So like I said, now if we count around, we should be at 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this next row we're going to do something very similar, but we're going to be increasing on the 4th and 5th again. But we're going to decrease on the last two loops. So it's technically, see this is the part that I'm trying not to be confusing on, because with decreases... When you decrease, you tie two loops together. So technically, we decrease on like the last four loops. But the way I like to think about it is the last two stitches we do are going to be decreases. So we increase on the fourth and the fifth. And then we're going to decrease for the last two stitches. And the decrease is kind of going to be on the one with the C-clip on it. I'll show you when we get there. But I'm picking up bands again. I'm really hoping I have enough yellow. It's not looking like I'm going to. But oh well... So like I said, we're going to increase on the 4th and the 5th again. I also don't know if my camera's blurry. Is it blurry? No, I think we're focused. Okay. It still looks blurry. Okay. So this one will be 1, 2, 
three. So we just did three single stitches. So the next one's the fourth. So we're going to increase on the fourth and the fifth. So we'll do two increases in a row. One. And two. And then we'll do single stitches until we get towards the end. And the four loops we're going to be decreasing on is this one with a C clip on it, the one next to it, and then these two. So I have to do one more single stitch. So we're decreasing on these four loops, so it's the one with a C clip on it, this one, and then basically these three single ones. And like I said, we're doing two decreases, so we're just going to do two decreases in a row. One, and then two, and then the C-clip will just go on this one, like that. That's pretty much it. It's going to start looking a little weird because of how we're increasing and decreasing, but don't worry, it turns out fine. So for the next row, we are going to do the exact same thing. So we're going to increase on the fourth and the fifth and we're going to decrease on the last two and we're decreasing kind of on the one with a c-clip on it again so it's literally the exact same thing we did last row we're going to do it again and believe it or not we only have three rows left after this um this design definitely comes together very quickly so like i said we're going to be decreasing on the no we're increasing on the fourth and the fifth and once again this one's still going to count as one so this is one two three. So the next two are the fourth and the fifth, so we're going to increase on those. So we'll do two increases in a row. And then we're going to do single stitches till we get towards the end. And then once again, we'll be decreasing on these last four loops, technically, because we're doing two decreases, we need four loops. So it's this one, this one, and then this one, and this one. And we just do a decrease. And then we do another decrease. And then on this decrease, we'll just put the seagull on this one. And we should still be at 10 loops. I know I haven't, I don't think, I think I forgot to count around last row too, but at the end of each of these rows, you should still be at 10 loops. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I think I keep forgetting to count around. If I did, I'm sorry about that, but basically until the end of this pattern from, until we close it up, we, you should be at 10 loops at the end of each of these rows in case I forget again. But I need to go grab more smoothie bands because I just ran out. So apparently I ran out of smoothie bands, so I'm going to have to use just opaque um, pastel yellow, so hopefully it won't look too funky. Um, yeah. So for the next row, we are going to be doing sort of the same thing, but this time we're going to increase on the 5th and the 6th, and we're going to decrease on the last two again. And we're decreasing in the same spot, so the only thing that moves this row is the increases. And I think my camera's out of focus. There we go. I don't know why it still looks out of focus. There we go. So, like I said, we're increasing on the 5th and the 6th now. So this is still 1. This is 2. 3. 4. So the next one's 5. So we just did 4, uh, yeah, four single stitches. Well, not this one's not a single stitch, but whatever. 1, 2, 3, 4. So the next two are increases. So we increase on this one, and the next one, oh man, you can really tell that these are opaque. I was hoping you wouldn't be able to, but it's really noticeable. It's fine. And then once again, we decrease on the last two, so the one with the C-clip on it, the one next to it, and then these two. So we'll do two decreases in a row. One. Oh my god, I don't know if you can hear the wind. There's a big gust just came of wind. I hate the wind. Well, I don't hate it. It's kind of fun if to like stand in it and just like 
Oh my god, it's so windy, but it's fun for like two seconds, and then once you're out in it too much, it's like, I hate it. Let's move your sequel up. So like I said, at the end of this row, we should still be at ten loops. You can count around. I'm not going to. Um, okay. So this is actually the last row of this guy. So we are going to increase on the fifth, and we're going to decrease on the last one that is not the one with the C clip on it. So I'll show you. Oh, yeah. I hate that it's windy though because last week, um, what was I doing last week? Why was I so busy last week? Or was it the weather again? I've been dying to roller skate because I do that for fun sometimes. And I haven't been able to because it has been so windy or I work or something. And it's like the days I don't work, it's windy. And then if I don't work at something else. Oh, it was my allergies. That's what was bad last week. I was like, why can't I skate last week? I was dying of allergies. <sighs> that makes sense. But yeah. Like I said, we'll increase on the 5th, and then the last one we decrease. So, let's first increase on the 5th. So, 1, 2, 3, wait, is that 4? That's, that's 4. I can't count. Um, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, so the next one's the 5th, so we're going to increase. And then we're going to decrease on the last one. So, we're going to decrease on these two, so not the one with the C-clip, the two before that. So, we'll just do single stitches until we get to there. So, single stitch. Single stitch. And then once you get to... I need to do one. Wait, no, that's the right spot. And then once you get to these two before the C-clip, you'll do a decrease on them. And then you'll make a single stitch on the one with the D... On, on the one with the C-clip. I almost said on the one with a decrease. On the one with the C-clip on it, and you'll move... C clip up on to this one. And now we're gonna stuff it. Um, you can kind of tell which way it wants to lean, so you can just like squish it towards that. But we're gonna put a little bit of stuffing in him. I think they need a little bit of stuffing. I've never not stuffed one of these, so you probably wanna stuff it. And right now is a good time to stuff it because after this, we're pretty much just closing it up and we're done. This jelly bean is really quick to make. I kind of want to make a bunch, but I have, like, no pastel bands. Ugh, I need to buy more. Even though I heard, I think I mentioned this in the Peeps tutorial, too, if you watched that one. That there's a pastel, like, bucket of bands at Michael's now. And I really, I have been meaning to go get it, but I have to go early for work because there's not, like, a Michael's on the side of town I live on. So I would have to go to work early so we could stop by the Michael's before. Before I go to work, that way I don't have to just like drive over there just to go to Michael's. Even though I would love to do that because I really want the pastel bands because then I could make a bunch of pastel jelly beans and that would be fun. I just don't have the bands for that right now. I was excited with the glow bucket though. I saw this and I was like, oh my god, they finally did it. And then everyone's like, yeah, that's old. And I was like, ah, that's okay. <laughs> I just didn't know about this. If you guys ever see fun new bands at Michael's, let me know, please. I would be so grateful. Okay, so now all we're going to do is we are going to decrease everything until it's closed, so we'll just put our hook back in, and you can take the C-clip out at this point, but we're just going to decrease absolutely everything until it's closed. So every single stitch we do is going to be a decrease. I think the lighting got a little weirder. But yeah. We're just going to decrease absolutely everything until it's closed. And I kind of overstuffed the butt a little bit because I know that I'm going to need the extra stuffing later and I didn't want to have to add it. But yeah, we're just decreasing everything until we can't and it's closed. I may have overstuffed him. I thought the extra stuffing was a good idea, but he kind of looks like he's bursting right there. So once you have the very last decrease you can do up on your hook, you're just going to pull a band through everything on your hook. Push the back one over the front one and pull tight. And we'll just hide the tail into our jelly bean. Like that. And let me just hide the tail a little bit better. 
I always have such a hard time hiding tails on camera. All of my years of doing tutorials and I still have such a problem with it. I don't know why it's so hard. But it is. Okay. So now all you're going to do once you hide the tail is you do want to kind of squish it towards the side. You can tell where the decreases are. Just squish it a little bit towards that side. You don't have to like, like really, really squish it. But as long as you just do it a little bit just so it kind of like leans that way a little bit more. And then you're done. So that's pretty much it for the main part of this jelly bean. I'll show you how to put a face on it just in case you don't know. But that is pretty much it for this guy. He just needs a face now. So I'm going to go grab some beads so we can put a face on him. Okay, I got the stuff I need for the face. So you're going to want to get some eyes. And if you already know how to put your eyes on a band, you can do that. But I'm going to show you real quick. So you're going to want to get your bead, a piece of string. I usually use dental floss. I just think that this type of string works the best. And we're just going to bead the bead onto the string. Like that. Then we'll get our band, put it on the string as well. Then we just fold it over and go back through the bead. And we just slide it on. And there you go. Um, I also got two pink, j pink bands for the cheeks. So you're just going to want to pick where you want to put the face. I mean, it doesn't really matter which side you do. It just p depends which way you want him to look like he's curving, I guess. I like to do it on this side. So I'm going to go about right here. Is that too low? Nah, it's fine. I'll just pull the band through. Push the back one over the front one and pull tight. Like that. I usually don't hide the tails in until I like where the eyes are, so I'm just going to put both the eyes in. Like that. And then we'll hide our tails. There's one. It always takes a second to hide the tails when the designs are smaller. I may have put his face too low. Did I put it in the right spot even? Oh my god. No, I didn't because that's where the curve is. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oops. Um. So it's always hard to tell where I'm putting the faces on camera. But I'm just going to show you how to do the cheeks. So you'll just come right under where the eye is. Then you'll pull a band through. With then it's back on your hook. Push the back one over the front one. And then pull kind of tight but not too tight. And you just tuck it in. So you do that for both sides. I'm not going to do the other side because I'm going to have to move the eyes because I put them in the wrong spot. Um, and it's just because I couldn't tell where I was putting them because I am attaching on camera. But that is pretty much it for this jelly bean design. Um, I hope yours turned out okay. I hope you like it. I had to pause because I felt like I was going to sneeze. Um, but I hope your jelly bean turned out okay. I hope you like it. Um, I like this design. I like the subtle bean shape. Um... I think it's cute. Um, if you make one of these, definitely show it to me on Instagram. I would love to see how your jelly bean turns out. And just to know if I always did a good job in the tutorial. I always feel like a sigh of relief when I see someone else make it and it looks good. I'm like, I must have done well. So I love seeing what you guys make. So definitely show it to me on Instagram. I would love to see it. Also, if you are watching this video before or in the year of 2022 and it's before Easter, I am doing a small giveaway on Instagram and I'm giving away some peeps I made. So some of these guys, oh, I'm giving them away. So you can check out my Instagram post if you want to see how to win. Um, it is US only, I'm sorry about that if you're international, but shipping is expensive and I wanna do a big giveaway in the summer. So this one won't be international, but the one I'm hoping to do in the summer will be international. So yeah, but yeah. My Instagram and everything will be in the description in case you want to check out me out over there. I, I've been posting some of the stuff I make um, on the community tab before I make a tutorial just so you guys can know what's coming. So if you subscribe, you can see the community tab easier and you will know what's coming up. Also, if you just follow me on Instagram, I always post when I'm filming and stuff and it's just a good way to keep up with me if you want to know what designs are coming. 
But yeah, I think that is it for this tutorial. Like I said, show me your jelly beans. I hope yours turned out okay, but I think that is it. So I will see you hopefully in a new tutorial soon, but bye.